it, John Cobble with DiscountJuicers.com. Today we have another exciting episode for you. In this episode, I'm actually going to finally make a juicing 101 video. This is my take on juicing, sharing my opinions and some of the science that I've looked up and I've seen, and just showing you guys my experience as the number one juicer expert in the entire world. I started personally juicing on a regular and consistent basis back in 1995 and started selling juicers like around 1998 on the internet. I've been making videos on YouTube for over the past maybe like 12 years and I have more videos on juicers than anybody else. I got into juicing for my health and that's maybe the reason why you guys are watching this because you want to take your health up to the next level and I believe juicing can help you do that no matter what kind of diet style you guys are on. In this episode, I'm going to show you guys the Juicing 101, so just some of the basic basics, plus you'll get some advanced knowledge kind of like tucked into this basic uh, Juicing 101. You know, I've looked at other Juicing 101 videos on YouTube, and it actually kind of makes me sad because there is a lot of misinformation out there, and my goal is to always have the most accurate information that I can just to empower you guys, which are the consumers. That's why I have over 600 videos comparing different juicers side by side so you guys could learn which one is the best juicer for you. There's many different juicers out there. Some are good, some are really good, some are really poor, some will make higher levels of nutrients, and that's not necessarily the topic of this video, although I'll be, I'll be touching on that. What this video is about juicing, for those of you guys that may have never even heard of it or don't know what it is, we're going to get into the nitty gritty, so let's go. So what is juicing? It's basically taking the healthiest foods on the planet, which are fruits and vegetables. And today we have a super humongous cucumber today. And basically juicing allows you to basically concentrate the nutrients in the cucumber, taking out some of the fiber, which is ejected out one side of the juicer, which in this case it's on this side. And all the nutrients and liquid and soluble fiber comes out the other. So this allows you to basically reduce the mass and maybe, you know, concentrate the amount of fruits and vegetables that you get into get into you and fruits or vegetables are correlated with a healthier and longer life especially some of the vegetables including the leafy green vegetables and root vegetables which is what I prefer to juice you know we are not set up like a cow to digest things like grass you know but you can use a juicer to juice something like wheatgrass or kale or even lettuce for that matter to remove some of the fiber, but more importantly, when you're juicing, you basically break down and break open the cell walls to release the valuable phytonutrients, vitamins, and minerals, enzymes, and of course, that amazing structured water that you want to get into you. So that's what juicing is, just taking fruits and vegetables, taking out one component of it, and leaving the rest so that you can benefit your body. And you know, I mean, I'd much rather drink a juice then eat this super large cucumber and actually several of these juices today actually contain cucumbers just like this so I can get all the nutrients of the cucumber in a very easy, fast, easier to digest manner that I could grab and take on the go. And it'd be a little bit difficult to eat this cucumber on the go because it's just so big. So is juicing the same as a smoothie? No, juicing is not the same as a, as a smoothie. When you make a smoothie you use a blender that basically blends up the fruit or vegetables into the whole component that's just broken down with the blades there's many challenges to blending I'll summarize the, the summary is that blending is great because you keep the fiber but the really bad negative in my opinion is that you're oxidizing the food really bad because if you ever look down in the middle of a blender it's like a little funnel cone in there like a tornado going around busting open the cell walls but also introducing a lot of air and oxidation. Published studies show that you know, a slow juice will create higher antioxidant levels and oxygen sensitive nutrients in the juice rather than using a blender that keeps the fiber. Now when you juice, you keep the soluble fiber and remove the insoluble fiber and the percentage of fiber that you keep will range depending on the produce item. On something like cactus fruits, you may be keeping like 70% of the fiber. On something like pineapples, you're only keeping 10% of the fiber. On something like carrots, which I have over here, you're keeping approximately half of the fiber. So yes, you're still getting some fiber when you drink the juice. And when you make a blended smoothie, you're keeping all the soluble and insoluble fiber. The texture is a lot more thick, but more importantly, you're going to degrade some of those, especially oxygen-sensitive nutrients 
that in my opinion are some of the most important nutrients in fresh juice. Why is juicing beneficial? Juicing is beneficial because it allows you, number one, to eat your fruits and vegetables in an easy, more convenient, even to go way. You know, it's a fact that most Americans, maybe less than 10% of Americans, or around 10% of Americans, eat the recommended servings of fruits and vegetables a day. And this is quite sad to me. I mean, fruits and vegetables are the healthiest foods on the planet, and it makes me sad that most Americans simply do not eat enough of them. I definitely will put a word in for getting more vegetables in, because recent studies show that vegetables are even more health preventative and health positive than even fruit is. But yeah, the, the juicing allows you to concentrate. So like each one of these quart jars have approximately four pounds of fruits or vegetables. Most of these are just vegetable juices. Some are fruit juices. But now I could literally grab one of these, be out the door on the go on my way to work or wherever you're going, and get literally four pounds of vegetables in you. I know, I know no better way to concentrate the fruits and vegetables in an easy to digest and fun form than juicing myself. Now the other reason why juicing is so good is because you are breaking down those fibrous cell walls that were not really designed to digest and when you break open the fibrous cell walls you release the nutrients into the juice they're much more easily absorbed and taken into our bloodstream in higher concentrations than just eating the food alone. I have other videos where I get into the studies on this and how you know drinking carrot juice you'll have greater levels of beta carotene in your blood or the pro vitamin A than say eating the carrots raw. So can't I eat fruits and vegetables if they're so healthy for me? Why do I need to juice them? Well, Once again when you juice them you could get more of them into you than you normally would so you could literally crank up your fruit and vegetable consumption which is the number one under eaten food on the planet especially those uh, leafy green vegetables that most people don't like to eat, especially things like you don't like, like maybe Brussels sprouts or broccoli or cauliflower. You could surely juice those things and drink a nice cauliflower juice, which actually has a really mellow taste, um, and get those into you. Also, like I said, you know, when you juice items, you know, you're removing some of the fiber, so it's a lot easier to digest. And a lot of people, especially if they've eaten a junk food diet or not the best foods, have a digestive system that really is upset, I will say by eating whole fruits and vegetables. You know, you could get the runs if you eat too many apples or, you know, get stomach pains if you eat kale because it's just too hard on your digestive system. Juice, on the other hand, is the easiest food on the planet to digest because literally it is in a liquid state. So it ha has a really easy time going through our digestive system and not upsetting our bodies. And even then, I have videos on how to show how to, you know, how to drink juice if you're having challenges with it, you know. So link down below, check the description down below for videos that are related to this topic that I have made for beginners in the past. Like, some people feel nauseated when drinking a juice, and I have techniques you guys can use to help mitigate that. Don't we need the fiber? Juicing removes all the fiber! Well, that's where you got it wrong. A lot of influencers and people online will say juicing removes all the fiber. Once again, I have videos showing that published scientific studies show that juicing, depending on how you juice and the process being used, does retain some of the fiber. Especially that soluble fiber that is literally soluble, is that means it dissolves in liquid, so it's in the juice. I mean, if I juice something like um, grapefruit with the, with the pith, right, it's very high in pectin, I like literally have a juice that will like form it and solidify like jello in the bottle or the jar that I stored in. So a lot of juices still can have lots of fiber and I'm not I'm not saying fiber is bad or we don't need it. We absolutely need fiber. Most Americans are not getting their recommended servings or grams of fiber day, which I think is as low as 30. Me on the other hand, despite drinking you know, two to three juices like this size a day, I'm still approaching like 100 grams of fiber because there is fiber in my juice as well as I eat foods, whole fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains, legumes, mushrooms that contain a whole wide variety of fiber. In my opinion, there's a time for fiber and there's a time not for fiber and especially, you know, in the morning times when I'm like breaking my fast of sleeping, I like to get juices that are a little bit easier in my digestive system and take a break from fiber for a little bit, but more importantly, flood my body with the phytonutrients in an easy to digest way. Are smoothies healthier than juice? So it depends on your specific goals. If you just want to bulk up, right, and get lots of more fiber in you, like the insoluble fiber, then smoothies would be a great way to do that because you know you're you're gonna get rid of some of the pulp. That being said, what you're not getting when you're making a smoothie is some of the oxygen sensitive 
uh, vitamins and phytonutrients that are in the produce. In addition, the texture is a lot more thick, so it may not be agreeable to some, plus it may be a lot harder to digest for some people as well. For that reason, I personally choose juicing over smoothies. That being said, I make plenty of smoothies, and if you do want to make smoothies, I would recommend a vacuum blender because at least you could, you could stop the problem of the oxidation of those vitamins and different phytonutrients because you are basically blending in an oxygen deprived environment that the, that the oxidation doesn't happen to those nutrients. What is the healthiest produce to juice? So you know, might, you might see many influencers online, they make a lot of juices that contain high levels of fruit and I will be the first to tell you that in my opinion, you know, while fruit juice can be healthy depending on what it's substituting out of your diet, for example, if you're drinking soda and you go to fruit juice, dude, you're making great improvements. That being said, for optimal health, my recommendation is to juice the vegetables and especially the leafy green vegetables and non-starchy vegetables. So on the bottom here, I have my green juice. I have a link down below for how you can create your own recipes and make healthy recipes when juicing. You know, the green juices and the leafy green juices are the healthiest things to juice. Next healthy, I would say, is you want to juice things like a stem juices, so that's like a celery juice, for example. I would consider broccoli and cauliflower like their flowers or also stems, vegetables. Then going from there, I would say something like the root vegetables, so this is like my carrot juice uh, with uh, ginger and turmeric and some Asian pears in it. And then this is my straight up root juice with carrots, purple carrots, beets, uh, purple sweet potatoes, uh, red cabbage. Check my Instagram down below for pictures of the different juices plus the recipes that I'm creating at the time if you guys are curious about what I'm drinking. But yeah, I'd say with go with your vet, your leafy greens, your stem vegetables, then go with your root vegetables, and only add enough fruits to make it healthy. These are the best produce items to juice, and I want you guys to juice a variety of leafy greens. Don't always just pick the kale or always pick the spinach. Hey, one week you go shop and get some kale, one week you go shop and get the spinach, and that could be the dominant green for that week's juicing uh, because, you know, maybe the kale's on sale that week, or, you know, that's how I shop. If the kale's on sale, I'm getting kale that week, and if the spinach is on sale, I'm buying spinach that, that week, or better yet, grow a garden like I do and harvest whatever is in season in your garden and use that for your juicing and your meal prep as well. Is fruit juice bad, like some people say? So fruit juice is not my first choice for a healthy juice. That being said, I have reviewed published studies, links down below, that, you know, the, the reviewer in the study shows that, you know, drinking a fruit juice can be as healthy and you get the similar benefits of eating the whole fruit alone, depending on how that juice is made. That being said, vegetable juices and leafy green vegetable juices are healthier than fruit juice. So, you know, my goal is to drink the vegetable juices. And yeah, I make some fruit juices too when I have excess fruit that I need to use and, and get out of my fridge or whatever, and I'll drink them. But I want you guys to concentrate on the vegetables. But once again, if you guys got kids and your kids are slopping down soda, a Coke, Diet Coke, whatever, you guys are doing that, right? A fruit juice is way, way better than those things. So the question is, what are you substituting out of your diet to get the fruit juice in? If the fruit juice is taking place of steamed vegetables, I don't think that's a good trade. If the fruit juice is taking place of like some cookies or Nabisco's, Oreos cookies or something, that's a good thing too, you know, so it depends on your specific situation. Isn't sugar being concentrated in the juices? <laughs> so when you juice you don't end up with more sugar than you had from the produce and actually I would argue that actually you probably have less sugar than, it, than eating the whole produce alone because when you juice say oranges you're gonna get the juice from the oranges out and when the pulp comes out you know there's gonna still be some sugar left in there so you're actually ridding yourself of some of the sugar that being said the very important distinction is that you're only keeping the saba fiber and disturbing the cellular matrix that the sugar is in <laughs> So for that reason, you know, I don't necessarily recommend juicing fruits. Does carrot juice have a lot of sugar? One of the things I've heard is that people will avoid root juices or carrot juice because it contains lots of sugar. So if you guys are drinking orange juice but then not drinking carrot juice, right, that doesn't make sense to me because carrot juice has 53% less sugar than orange juice, right? I believe carrots in proper carrot juice in proper moderation is a perfectly healthy food and in my book it is definitely healthier than orange juice. If you want to make your carrot juice less sweet, add some beets. Beets have less sugar in it than uh, carrots. 
and then you can actually also add things like the cucumber to basically top it off to basically you know so you could juice less carrots but let's be frank here you know there's therapies such as the Gerson therapy that uses carrots and apples to heal people that are labeled incurable with cancer and other diseases and there's so many testimonials that the Gerson therapy can work so I believe carrots are a healthy thing to juice and just because it contains some sugar in it doesn't make it necessarily bad in my book. Should I avoid juicing any produce items? So here's the thing, if you guys could eat the produce raw, then generally you can juice it and you can drink the juice of it. So like most people would not eat raw eggplant or raw potatoes, so those things you wouldn't necessarily want to juice. Likewise, rhubarb is not necessarily eaten raw either, so you wouldn't want to juice it and drink the juice. Other than that, any fruit or vegetable that you might put in a salad or eat as a fruit salad, you could totally juice it. And actually juicing allows you to get parts of the fruit or vegetable that you might not otherwise get. For example, you could juice watermelon with the rind, with the green outer rind, and the green outer rind is rich in chlorophyll. It'll also make the watermelon juice a little bit less sweet because you are juicing the rind and the part right below the rind where there are a lot of nutrients as well. Is it okay to mix fruits and vegetables when juicing? So, you know, I learned from Jay Cordage, the juice man, that you shouldn't mix any vegetables with fruits other than something like pears or apples. That being said, while I respect Jay, the juice man, highly because he got me into juicing, you know, I'm more lax on that now. You know, I like to tell people, hey, if juicing some fruit into your vegetables will get you to drink the vegetable juice, then it's totally worth it, right? My goal is to juice as many vegetables and really minimize the amount of fruit that I juice into my juices uh, so that I can have the best health benefit from getting the vegetables in me. Is it okay to make the same juice recipe every single day? So I know a lot of people get into their habits and they go to the grocery store and they buy the same 20 items week in, week, week out, and their diet doesn't change a lot. And some people will like make the same juice for 10 years straight. Personally, while you could do that because it's up to you and check with your dietitian, uh, you know, regarding that personally, for me personally, I my goal is to change up my juice every single day. I'm well aware that certain phytonutrients that may be considered anti-nutrients by some influencers online. And so knowing that all fruits and vegetables can have some ben benefits to it, but also some things that may be not so good about it, you know, that is why it is really important to me to rotate the vegetables. You know, if you juice a lot of spinach and you're juicing spinach every single day, you're getting high amounts of oxalates in your juices. While I don't avoid juicing spinach, what I will tell you is that I don't tend to juice spinach a whole lot because of the oxalates. That being said, if you are healthy, you should have oxygen digesting bacteria in our guts that will, you know, take care of those oxalates for you and digest them before it could, you know, hit your body. But of course, if you have something like kidney stones, you know, consult your doctor. Uh, spinach is not something that I personally would be juicing. So, I encourage you guys to rotate your juices on a, at least a minimally a weekly basis. Each one of these juices, I may make five or six quarts or seven quarts at a time. I'll drink through that, and then the next week, I'll make a totally different recipe that's varied from the previous week. I don't like pulp in my juice. How much pulp is put into the juice? So the question is how much insoluble fiber is put into the juice? That depends specifically on the juicer you're using, and more importantly, the type of produce you are juicing. So for example, soft apples will put more pulp in the juice than a nice firm fresh apple. The pure juicer, which is a two-stage hydraulic press juicer, will basically put zero pulp in your juice, uh, almost to its fault in my opinion, but that's a different topic. Um, whereas like a slow juicer like the Nama will put a small percentage of pulp in there. You guys can remove the pulp if you don't like it. Uh, frankly, I'll tell you guys that probably drinking some of the pulp in your juice is probably a, a good thing to get some of those extra fibers in you. What is the foam that forms on the juice? So depending on what juice you use and what you're juicing, um, the, ju the foam is actually basically a juice that has some air uh, added to it. The foam will basically pop and turn back into juice and settle over time. That being said, if you don't like it, you could just skim it off. Um, a lot of produce items may make more foam than others. So for example, there's a property in vegetables and fruits to some extent called saponins, which are basically what they make soap nuts out of and it makes you, makes the juice suds more and causes more air bubbles. Also depending on the juicer you're using, some juicers like high speed juicers will put a lot more air into the juice than say a slow juicer or even vacuum juicing like I've shown in my videos. How do you prepare produce for juicing? So 
For me personally, I just buy organic produce generally at the store or just pick produce out of my garden and then I just usually just wash it. Sometimes I'll soak it. Sometimes I'll spray it off with a high pressure spray. Uh, if it's a carrot from the store, I'll just brush it off with a brush. Um, and that's pretty much all I do. I may cut off the top and the bottom of the carrot that has like the funky parts, cut off all, all the bad spots of produce, cut it up into pieces, and then put it in the juicer. And I mean, that's how easy it is uh, to, you know, to prepare your produce. I don't use any elaborate kind of produce soaks or washes, which you could look into if you want. Do I need to buy organic produce? So organic produce is your choice. You know, my choice is to buy organic whenever I could find it and whenever possible. 90 to 95% of my diet is organic fruits and vegetables, plus the homegrown food out of my garden, which uh, is superior to or just organic vegetables, in my opinion, and fruits. But no, you do not have to buy organic vegetables or fruits to juice them. Even if you buy conventional fruits and vegetables, they're still the healthiest items in the grocery store you guys could purchase. But hey, if they're available, try to purchase organic whenever possible. The two main reasons are, number one, you're going to maximize some of your uh, phytonutrients because they're grown organically. The plant has, has to foster its own defense systems so it can have more polyphenols and different phytonutrients in there, which is going to benefit you greater in your health. And the second reason is because you're going to reduce the amount of synthetic pesticides on your food that can literally be toxic for us that our bodies can bioaccumulate over time. What are the best juicing recipes to make? And you know what? That depends on your specific taste buds and it depends how you define best. So for me, the best juicing recipe you guys can make are green juices. Green juices are the best because the leafy green vegetables are the least eaten food uh, on the planet. <laughs> so you wanna make juices out of leafy greens. So how I do this, for example, in this juice is like based on six heads of romaine, two heads of cabbage, all organic, and then I add in things like uh, cucumber, um, ashitaba stalks, which are kinda like celery but different, and a bunch of kale from my garden. And that makes up my green juice for this week. Any tips on creating your own juicing recipes? Well, I got a video for that linked down below. That video is almost an hour long already, so I'm not really gonna go into how to create your own juicing recipes. But the tips I would give you are this. Number one, you wanna try to keep your juicing recipes simple. Try not to add like everything in the kitchen sink. I've done that before and you can make some juices that taste really horrible. These days, my juices generally contain less than six ingredients, like a mono juice, like watermelon juice, tastes great, but I also would encourage you guys to up your watermelon game and make your watermelon more nutritious. You could do that by juicing watermelon with cucumbers and then maybe adding in some mint or basil to juice at the same time. Also top it off with just a little bit of ginger to spice it up and add some antioxidant capacity. What kind of juicer should I get? And so that's a big discussion topic. There's many different kinds of juicers. There's high speed juicers, there's slow juicers, there's cold press or hydraulic press juicers, there's twin gear juicers, there's auger juicers. There's so many different types of juicers out there and that's what this channel is dedicated to, to teach you guys about all the different types of juicers and finding the right one for you. The main thing you wanna remember is that you wanna match what you're gonna juice with the juicer that you're gonna buy and you wanna be sure that the juicer you're buying will properly juice the items you wanna juice. For example, if you want to juice a lot of leafy greens, it really would not be a good idea to get one of those high speed juicers, which are the lowest cost juicers, the most prevalent juicers on the market, because they don't juice leafy greens well. Put a link down below if I remember to a video where I actually use the Nama J2 and a Breville high speed juicer for juicing something like straight tangerines, and the Breville did a horrible job on the tangerine juice. I think it made like 60% less juice than the Nama, so it also depends on, you know, What's important to you? You just want to be done fast and have 60% less juice or do you want to, you know, better utilize your produce to save more money and get a higher quality juice with a slow juicer? So I'll put a couple links down below in the description uh, so that it'll help you choose the right juicer for your specific needs. Do I need to buy any accessories besides a juicer? So some good accessories to have besides a juicer are number one, a cutting board and number two, a really good knife. Maybe number three, a nice brush so that you can actually clean off the juicer when you're done and make sure you clean it with soap guys just brushing it with water alone does not get the stains out and can cause buildup over time you might also want to get things like mason jars and vacuum lids for your mason jars and that'll help you store your juices like i do and you can store your juices for up to seven days doing it in this manner when using a slow juicer 
For more information on that, check the link down below for my video on how to stir your juices for up to seven days. Can't I make juice in my blender? Yes, you could absolutely make juice in a blender. There's many videos doing this. People put the produce in, they may have to add some water, which then I would say you're diluting your juice and that's not a true juice in my opinion, but I'm more of a purist. And then blend it up and then put it through a sieve or put it through some kind of nut milk bag or even an old pantyhose and strain out the pulp. In my opinion, that's one of the worst ways you guys can juice because it oxidizes the juice even more than a high speed juicer does because there are multiple hits on the produce as it's spinning around in the blender. So you're causing massive damage to some of the oxygen sensitive nutrients and phytonutrients especially that can give you health benefit. I'm not gonna say that's bad because hey, get, getting some juice even if it's in a blender is better than not getting any juice at all, but why not try to optimize and get a higher quality juice to flood your body with even more nutrients. That being said, if you guys want to make juice in a blender, you guys can do that. The only method I would recommend to do that is using a vacuum blender. I'm the only channel on YouTube that has videos on how to make a vacuum juice links down below to that if you're interested. Is one kind of juicer better than another? And I'd absolutely say yes, but which one should you get? It depends on you and your specific criteria and needs and what you want in a juicer. Some juices will get a higher yield. Some will make a higher nutritional quality juice. Some are more efficient. Some save time when cleaning. Some save time when juicing. Some will handle leafy greens better than juicing fruits. Some will handle carrots better than fruits. You know, and some are more expensive than others. So it all depends the criteria that's important to you. And once again, I have over 600 videos on this channel dedicated to showing you guys how each of the different juicers work so that you guys can select the right one for you. What is the best juicer? So that's like a loaded question. It's asking, asking like you, that have, if you have kids, like what's, who's your favorite kid? And you really don't want to answer that because one kid, Joey, might be good with playing music, but the other kid, Susan, might be good at playing sports. So it just kind of depends. So once again, there's no best juicer out there that I could always say, buy this juicer, it's completely the best. What I will say is there is a best juicer for you based on your needs and based on what you want to juice. The best juicer for me at this point and in my life and what I'm juicing and what I'm doing is the Nama J2. This happens to be my favorite juicer. Link down below to video 10 reasons why the Nama J2 is my favorite juicer. It's primarily my favorite juicer because it's just a lot easier to use. You literally open this lid, dump in all the produce, little pre-cutting necessary, shut the lid, turn it on. You could like literally walk away for a couple minutes and come back, have 24 to 32 ounces of juice made for you without you having to push each item in to the juicer. What is a cold press juicer? So the first thing I'll say is that there's no legal definition of what a cold press juicer is. I'll also put a link down below uh, where I answer this in detail. What is a cold press juicer? But to me, a cold press juicer is a juicer that does not introduce heat into the juicing process because it's a cold press juicer. It also has the word press in there, which means the produce is going to get pressed somehow, either against a cloth or against a screen to get juiced. So that would mean that you're using a two-stage juicer or something like a single auger juicer or twin gear juicer. These are uh, cold press juicers and they make a higher quality juice than a high speed juicer that is not a press juicer, however, can be a cold juicer. Do I need to clean the juicer after you use it? <laughs> well, you don't have to, <laughs> but I highly recommend that you guys clean your juicer after every use and as soon after every use that you can. Because here's the thing, if you don't clean your juicer, pulp, and deposits, mineral deposits, and phytonutrient deposits will build up over time on parts, especially like the screen, that will reduce your performance and yield over time. So yes, I recommend after every use, uh, cleaning your juicer. If you want to juice three times a day, you're going to clean your juicer three times a day. Don't just like, oh, I just made juice, so I'm going to let it sit for a couple hours and then make juice later. No, don't do that because the pulp will harden inside the juicer, cause a poor performance, and cause your parts... Uh, to get clogged, especially the screen, over time. How long does cleaning a juicer take? So, you know, that depends on the specific juicer. So the easiest juicer to clean is something like the Santa 727 or Omega NC800, which takes me about 90 seconds. Going up to there, you could, you know, take like upwards of like almost 10 minutes if you get like a twin gear juicer where pulp gets impregnated into the screen and, you know, you got all these nooks and crannies that you got to deal with. Um, on the other hand, our good mid-range, easy-to-clean juicer is the Nama J2 that takes me approximately four to seven minutes to clean. 
and that should be a reasonable expectation when cleaning a juicer. How long does juicing take? So, you know, that's a loaded question. It depends on how much you're juicing, number one, and the produce items you're juicing. So, for example, in the NAMA J2, if I'm juicing carrots, it'll maybe take four minutes to create about 24 ounces of carrot juice on average. But if I'm juicing something like watermelon that, that's really watery, it could take two minutes to make a quart of juice, 32 ounces of juice. So it really just depends on the juicer you're using. I like the NAMA because once again you load it up and you can literally walk away, whereas most juicers you need to like sit there and push produce items into the juicer. If speed is your only concern, then you actually all want to go with a high speed juicer because literally in those juicers, in under like a minute, you can make a quart of juice easily. The challenge with those juices is that you're very you're making a very low quality juice, in my opinion, that has a lot of oxygen added into it. Other juicers, such as a uh, horizontal auger juicers that have a smaller feed chute, and you need to push each item into the juicer, can take even longer uh, than the NAMA J2, depending on the speed of the juicer and, of course, what you're juicing. Can I add things to my juice? before I drink it. So yes, once you make your juice, feel free to add other ingredients. You know, you could take your juice and then put it in your blender and then vacuum blend in an avocado for some extra added fat. You could blend in some nuts if you want it a little more rich and creamy. You could take things like green powders like wheatgrass powder or even fruit powders, you know, and mix those into your juices. If you want to get extra fiber, you could actually add something like flax powder or other fiber supplements in your juices as well. You know, that's up to you. The fact of the matter is most of the time I just drink my juices plain without adding anything else into them. Does juice have a lot of calories? <laughs> so that's another loaded question. So it really depends on what specifically you are juicing. If you're juicing lower carbohydrate, uh, leafy greens, and stem vegetables, right? Like if you're on a keto diet, that's what you're going to be juicing because you want to juice low carbohydrate. You know, a quart of juice could have as low as 80 calories. If you're juicing something like carrots, you know, a quart of carrot juice, could have approximately 350 calories, right? And if you're juicing something like pineapple juice straight, you know, it could be like 480 calories per quart of juice. So it all depends on the ingredients you're juicing. In general, fruits will have a lot higher uh, cal caloric content. So like a quart of watermelon juice, I think it's around 274, 270 calories on average, something like that. And, you know, green juices could have a lot less. So, you know, the sweeter the fruit, then the more calories it will be. So I encourage you guys to you know, uh, drink lower calorie fruits and vegetable juices if weight loss is something that's important to you. Of course, if you're going on a juice fast, it's very important to not only drink the leafy green juices, but some of the other uh, juices with fruits and roots to ensure you get your caloric needs met. How much juice should I drink? So, you know, that is up to you entirely. I'm not a dietitian, nor am I a doctor, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys how much juice you should drink personally. It depends on you. I'll tell you how much I drink, and I've been drinking juice now for over 25 years. You know, I basically drink uh, two to three quarts of juice a day, and these are the juices that I'm drinking at this time, and that's for me personally, right? To me, juice juice substitutes for a meal. So for example, on many days, I don't eat breakfast and instead drink a juice or two. For example, today I drank a 24 ounce green juice and then I had a 32 ounce root juice. And you know now I'm gonna get to eating like a nice uh, meal of some mixed fruits and then something like a salad and then some like maybe some uh, beans and rice or something like that. So that's how I eat. Uh, you know, if you're new into juicing, you know, what I might recommend you do is start out slow, you know, drink 8 ounces of juice or 16 ounces of juice, see how you feel with that, right? But the goal for me is this, the more uh, that juice could take up room and displace foods that are not as healthy in your diet, the better, you know, and I don't know to what extent, like if you're just drinking soda and you drink 2 liters of soda a day, right, it'd be an amazing thing if you could slowly reduce the soda and increase the juice until you're just drinking fresh juice and not drinking any soda. Yes, you might have to get some fruit juice in at first so you can still get that sweet taste in your mouth. I even have videos where I carbonate juices, did one with my nephew, how I made uh, carbonated cherry juice, which is off the hook, so you can get rid of the soda and start drinking more juice, even if you're drinking fruit juice. But over time, I want you guys to reduce the amount of fruit juice you drink and then drink more vegetables. So juice, in my opinion, should be part of a healthy diet, but not take the place of a healthy diet because juice in itself is healthy, but you also want to eat other healthy plant foods as well.
Can I replace a meal with juice? Well, I'll tell you guys that I replace meals with juice. Some people would say, oh, you can't replace a meal with juice because it's different. You know, to me, replacing a meal with juice is one of the best things I could do because here's the thing. When I drink a juice, right, it's easy for my body to digest, get into me, get hydrated through the living structured water in there, get all those nutrients, and I could go about my day. It doesn't, like, slow me down. Like, I know a lot of you guys have eaten a big Thanksgiving meal and dinner, and after you eat a big Thanksgiving meal, you get tired and you feel like taking a nap and sleeping, right? That's because food and eating solid food could take some digestive energy from your body to divert. And when you drink a juice, it's digested a lot easier, so you're, you have energy to do other things. So that's why I love... Uh, you know, replacing some of my meals with juices. I may replace like one or one and a half meals a day with juices. And of course, the other, I eat like one and a half or two meals a day of solid food as well. I also believe that juices make an excellent snack between meals. And, you know, aside from maybe replacing a meal, it's definitely the best way, in my opinion, to get hydrated and, you know, tie you over until you eat your next meal is by drinking some fresh juice. What is the best time to drink juice? So there's a few ways I'll answer that. Number one, the best time to drink the juice is right after you make it. While I do store my juices, making the juice and drinking it right then and there is always going to be best. That being said, people ask, should I drink it on an empty stomach right after I make, eat something? I mean, I my goal is to drink juices on an empty stomach or a near empty stomach. That being said, later in the day after I've eaten some food and I got some food in me, but then I'm still thirsty, then yes, I'll actually drink a juice. You know, even if it's not totally perfect or optimal. I want you guys to know this. You know, once again, if juice takes the place of something worse that you're going to drink that's a beverage, right, then that's a good thing. Even if you have food in your stomach already, I wouldn't worry about that so much or trying to just be perfect or whatever. Drink a juice when you're thirsty, when you feel hungry, when you want a blast of phytonutrients, vitamins, and minerals in you. What is a juice feast or a juice fast? So a juice feast or a juice fast is basically drinking only juice for a limited period of time. I'd recommend watching a movie. It's available here on YouTube called Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead by Joe Cross, where he literally uses a high-speed juicer, which I wouldn't recommend, nor Joe would recommend it these days either, um, and drinks only juice, and you can see how his blood markers and how he improved his health and lost weight by just abstaining from eating solid foods and going on a juice fast, or what some people like to call a juice feast, or even some people call it a solid food vacation. What is a perpetual juice cleanse? And you probably never heard of that before because that's a term that I made up and that is what I do on a regular basis. You know, I don't generally go on juice fasts or juice feasts myself where I only drink juice. What I do is a perpetual juice cleanse where I'm drinking, you know, two to three juices a day. Um, and most of those juices are drank before I eat anything else for the day. So, you know, I'm basically... Um, waking up from fasting for eight hours when I'm sleeping, I might drink a little water, then I'm going to have a bunch of juice, uh, so that extends the time that my body is quote-unquote fasting or healing, and then I'll eat some solid food later in the day. And I believe this is a method that's a lot more easily tolerated and more easy to comply with than juice fasting. Juice fasting can be very difficult for some people to only drink juice and have the time to make that much juice, and, to, and you're going to miss solid foods a lot. And the other thing about juice fasting or juice feasting is that people will do a juice fast and then think, oh, I'm healthy now because I did a juice feast, pat themselves on the back and then go out and eat McDonald's and then like, oh, now I'm toxic or now I gain weight. Now I need to go on another juice feast again. And you get in this cycle mode, which I don't believe is healthy. It'd be a lot healthier just to implement, you know, some fresh juices on a regular basis, even if you still are eating your McDonald's or other highly processed foods. You know, because now at least your body is going to get that into you on a regular and consistent basis. I think that'll be better for your health. How long will juice store? So that's a loaded question. So it depends on what juicer you use to make the juice. Also, what are the ingredients in the juice? And more importantly, how you store the juice. And so what I'd recommend and say is this. You know, juicer manufacturers, slow juicer manufacturers will say you can store juice for up to three days with just sealing it in a jar. That being said, that is not a good storage method for me. How I like to store my juices is under a strong vacuum with more than 20 inches of mercury, which is kind of technical, but I'll put a link down below for how I store my juices for up to seven days with minimal nutrient loss. So I'd say the, the amount of time you can store your juice ranges from zero minutes, which means you should drink it right away if you're using one of those high speed juicers, to up to seven days if you use a slow speed juicer and you store the juice properly. 
uh, you know, like I share in my video, link down below. Can I freeze juice? So in my opinion, freezing juice is not the best. However, many people do that. I don't like freezing juice because the main issue is you're going to lose a lot of nutrients. Not necessarily in the freezing process. You'll lose some in the freezing process if it's not done under vacuum. Link down below to how, how to store your juices under vacuum if that's what you really want to do. But more importantly, when you thaw the juice out, um, you know, now there's going to be a lot more oxidation damage and the juice is going to turn brown and oxidize more. Not to say that that's bad because, you know, a frozen and thawed juice is still healthier than what most people are eating. But that being said, I believe a juice stored under vacuum, you know, that you could store for up to seven days when vacuumed and, and stored properly is a lot more healthy than storing a frozen juice and thawing it out later to drink. If juice is so good, why do I need to eat solid foods? <laughs> so... I recommend eating a variety and drinking a variety of fruits and vegetables, you know. Juicing is great, but it can't substitute for real food because it is very important to chew with our mouths, to get our jaws moving, to get all the different kinds of fiber, including sybil and in sybil fiber that's in the foods and to go through our normal digestive process and, you know, and not just to drink juice all the time. So I'm a big advocate of drinking, you know, part of your calories a day in juices you know, I may drink 30 to 40% of my calories that I get in a day through juices. I think it is that good. That being said, you need to figure out what percentage that feels good for you and agrees with your personal body. But I would encourage you guys to eat a lots of different plant foods. You know, for me personally, I would, I would any day rather drink a juice than eat some cheese or some animal products that does not contain any fiber because juices will contain more fiber than animal foods that don't contain fiber unless you're eating the organs of the animals that actually has the plant fiber in it. The last and final question of this Juicing 101 is what can I do with the pulp? So the pulp to me is a waste product. I've extracted all the good nutrients out of it and what's left is the insoluble fiber. To me insoluble fiber, there's many different kinds of insoluble fiber and insoluble fiber it, it, I grade. You know, so some insoluble fibers are much more valuable than others. And in scientific studies, it shows that fruit and vegetable fibers are not quite as valuable as something like a flax fiber or even a cereal grain fiber, or maybe even a bean fiber. So, you know, I'm glad to get rid of some of the pulp from my juice and put that in my compost bin after I give it a second pressing with using two juicers. I generally use the Nama J2 and the pure juicer. I use the hydraulic press to squeeze out the juice in which I will yield approximately 18 to 20 percent more juice depending on what I'm juicing out of the pulp. The pulp is super dry at that point and to me it is just a waste product. I know many people like to take their pulp and they could dehydrate it into different crackers. You could add it to soups or stews, use it to cook with, bake it into cookies, feed it to your dog. There's so many things you guys can do with it but for me personally it's just a waste product. I've already extracted all the nutrition out of the produce for the majority of it and to me I just basically compost it. If you don't have a composting system at home, I would encourage you to just go into your backyard and dig in a hole and bury in your pulp, right? That will, that will encourage worms to come. The worms will eat the pulp, make worm castings, and make your garden more fertile. So, yeah, that's what I do with my pulp and what I'd recommend you guys do with your pulp. So that pretty much sums it up for this Juicing 101 episode. If you guys are interested in buying that Nama J2 juicer that I use the most and is my favorite juicer at this time, I'm going to save you guys $55 off by using the coupon code J2101. That's J2101. We'll post it up on the screen right here. Link down below to NamaWell.com so you guys can save $55 off, which is 10% off the price of the Nama. In addition, when you use that code, Nama will uh, you know, share part of the commission with me so that I can continue to make these educational videos for you guys. So you guys are much appreciated for those of you guys that will use my code to save that 10% and also help me out at the same time so I can continue my mission to educate the world about fruits and vegetables and how you guys could get more of them into you through the amazing juicers. Also be sure to thumbs this video up if you guys like this video, like this episode, want me to do more informational episodes like this where I share my juicing knowledge with the world. Also be sure to share this video with somebody else that you guys could think it could help. If you have any other questions about juicing, I can't promise I'm going to answer it, but if you post another video, I definitely will try to come back to this video from time to time and answer any other juicing questions that you may have so that you too could become a juicer for life. 
Also, be sure to click that subscribe button right down below so you don't miss out on my new and upcoming episodes that are coming out every five to seven days. You never know where I'll show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. Make sure you click the bell so you get notified as many videos come out. And finally, be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge. Over 600 episodes at this time on this channel dedicated to teach you guys all about buying and information on juicing so you guys can buy the right juice for you. Links down below to some of the videos that I've recommended, like how to store your juices for up to seven days, as well as more videos on the NAMA J2 and other videos on selecting the right juicer that's going to be best for your specific needs, as well as the video I made, best three juicers of 2022, which frankly, uh, you should just get one of the juicers in that video because those are the best on the market at this time, in my opinion. So with that, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.